Down through the centuries, pilgrims have made their way to this ancient market town. Kings, merchants, and paupers alike came to Beverly to visit the tomb of its founder, St. John. As the former Bishop of York, he retired to an isolated monastery here in the early 8th century. John was credited with performing miracle cures. He died in 721 AD, but wasn't canonized until more than 300 years later. His remains were transferred to the Minster, rebuilt in a large and imposing scale. St. Mary's Church was established to the west of the town centre in the 12th century. It was originally a chapel of ease to the altar of St. Martin at Beverly Minster. These two magnificent churches are steeped in history. Their architectural detail, world class. This is their story. Two churches, one town. Beverly is an ancient market town situated around 30 miles southeast of York. It lies between the East Yorkshire Wells, the Humber Estuary and the North Sea. Originally part of medieval Northumbria, it is now the centre of the East Riding of Yorkshire. Both St Mary's and Beverly Minster have vibrant congregations and host a vast range of services, community events and performances. St Mary's Church community is thriving, it's really lively. We've got lots of children and young people as well as older folks and we have a real mix of traditions here. So we do uh, the traditional worship very, very well with a, a robed choir and we also do the contemporary as well. I'm Becky Lumley and I'm the Vicar of St Mary's here in Beverly. The word that I would use to describe it mostly is, is vibrant and lively and creative and pretty outgoing really. We feel really blessed because our building is, is a vehicle for community, for belonging, for exploring faith uh, and also for caring for one another as well. We have this extraordinary situation in our town of having two beautiful and nationally significant buildings. There is nowhere else in the country with this kind of situation. Beverly Minster is the largest parish church in England. Um, it's bigger than quite a number of cathedrals. I'm Reverend Canon Jonathan Baker, Vicar of Beverly Minster. We are just an ordinary parish church community. Um, same governance, same resources as your local church at the end of the street. And yet we find ourselves custodians of this building of international importance. We're very close to the, uh, the shrine of St. John of Beverly. John was clearly uh, a holy man who exercised a ministry of healing. One particularly significant miracle story is, is of him healing a young man who was deaf and dumb. After he died, his tomb became 
a place of pilgrimage. People came, prayed at his tomb, and reported answers to their prayers. Many of the, of the monarchs of the Middle Ages came on pilgrimage to, uh, to Beverly, um, including Henry V, who came here after the Battle of Agincourt to give thanks, uh, because Agincourt was fought on one of the feast days of St. John of Beverly. Um, Shakespeare talks about St. Crispin's Day, but actually it was also the translation of the relics of John of Beverly. Um, and so it was to Beverly that Henry V came after the battle in order to give thanks. The evolution of both church buildings highlights their incredible history and outstanding architectural features. It's very interesting that Beverly has these two major churches, uh, both of considerable merit and both grade one listed buildings. I, my name is Barbara English and I'm a retired professor of history from Hull University and I've been lucky enough to live in this wonderful town for nigh on 60 years. They are in themselves very beautiful and nobody in the last 200 years has built really on this scale with this, this amount of attention to detail. It's a big building for a start. It's bigger than a third of English cathedrals. So the scale of it is huge. It was all built to the original design. This is significant in my opinion. The fact that you can actually follow the design right the way through and see the adaptations that were made to it as it went. I'm John Phillips, I'm the historian of this wonderful building, having written a book on it, um, which took about 14 years, and I welcome here on a, on a weekly basis and do tours and roof tours and so on and so forth. So this has been my obsession, I think you could probably say, over the last 15 years. The book was started by looking at Mason's Marks when I first started coming in here. Mason's mark is a mark made on the stone that he's cut by the man who cuts the individual pieces of the building. They are very useful for dating it. Um, there's a sequence right way down this set of piers here. And then we got on to things like doing the dendrochronology and tree ring dating the roofs. From the time it started in 1188 right the way through to 1400 odd when it finished. We have the largest collection of minstrel carvings anywhere and they're up here, across there, and people come who are interested in medieval instruments and they want to reconstruct them because they've got them here. It's beautiful, so come and see it for that reason, if nothing else, especially on a day like today when we have the light and the light makes the detail stand out. This is a living building and every century had its input. Well, I'm Pamela Hopkins, and I've been living in Beverly for about the last 50 years. Uh, and for the last 30 years, I've been associated with the friend of Beverly Minster. And um, then I moved my allegiance to St Mary's because I was in the parish, live in the parish of St Mary's. We're sitting in the choir. It's a um, 12th century building, um, but the floor is 18th century. On either side of the choir are the 68 Missouri chord seats, uh, all built in the beginning of the um, 16th century. And the, the organ is uh, 18th century, the organ screen is 19th century. So every generation um, adds something to the minster. Uh, in the sanctuary there's a new window, it's called the Pilgrim Window and it's abstract in form. The sun shines through that. It's so bright you can't look at it. And it's supposed to represent the love of God. So this, this is pilgrims who are walking their way, or walk through life seeking what the purpose of life is. St Mary's Church was a daughter church of Beverly Minster. It was seen as the town's church and it has very much been at the heart of the community here. It was 
started being built in 1120, so it's 900 years old and it developed over 600 years. It has all sorts of different architectural styles and every generation has left its own mark on the building. It's a very different church from the Minster and people stand there and they just get the wow factor and they look across and marvel at what the church has to offer. St Mary's was built on land owned by the canon of the chapel of St Martin um, and he, he owned the land where St Mary's was built and decided to build a church for the northern market so that there was a church near the market. So it started quite small, it was just the chancel and the nave and then they added the transepts and then they lengthened it and then they widened it and then by about 1440 they decided it was a bit dark so they heightened it by putting clear story windows throughout um, and this all took 400 years. In St Mary's we, we talk about the pilgrim rabbit it is said that Lewis Carroll saw it but he is actually a 700 year old statue um, and he has a, a bag a cross which the pilgrims had. It's a, a place that captures the imagination because of the artistry in the building. We have nearly 700 what we call roof bosses and they are medieval and Tudor carvings of all sorts of things that were of interest to the people at the time. Above me here where we sat in the chancel are the, the ceiling of kings and they were painted in 1445 and they record the history of the kings going backwards. Um, so some of them are even fictional kings, they're sort of legendary kings. We have the, the ceiling of kings which is also very, very unusual, 1440 something and I've seen it used in major art history lectures as, as this is a remarkable thing, only one in England. There is a large oak door with the names of people who were killed in the war. In the bottom of it there is a small wooden mouse carved. And this is the work of a very famous Yorkshire carver called Robert Thompson. Initial work has seen a combination of repairs and enhancements completed to the highest standards. In the last few years we've done some very big restoration projects. Uh, one side of the clear story is a very big project of repairing stonework included the characters from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and the Chronicles of Narnia. The research that we did showed that people really connect with that story, but also it's the story of the Christian faith, so it makes sense here. On the other side, we did the women of influence carving, so we have these amazing scientists uh, and people who developed extraordinary things who were really overlooked in their own time, but who are incredibly important, who are now adorning the the um, south side of church and that was partly to respond to the question which we got asked all the time why has St Mary's only got the kings and not the queens on the ceiling and of course we recognize that often women's place were overlooked we're very fortunate to have this extraordinary building and very fortunate to be able to continue to act as custodians of it and do what every generation has done which is to look after it and in doing so, adds their own mark that is relevant to that particular time. We've had two lots of scaffolding since COVID. Um, one was for the Lesser South transept, 
and we re-roofed that area, replacing some timbers and also did some stonework. And then the bigger scaffold on the nave, because the last thing you want is half a roof new and half a new roof old, because it just causes problems. My name's Simon Delaney, I'm a Chartered Building Surveyor, and I am the surveyor for Beverly Minster Old Fund, so I look after the fabric of the Minster. We're at the west end, you can see the south side of the nave, and you can also see the south transept. So, the nave roof was recently completed, um, with funding from the Covid Recovery Fund and the Friends of Beverly Minster and the Beverly Minster Old Fund. But you can also see some newer stone in the pinnacles. So the pinnacles are the triang roughly triangular shaped pieces of stones in a column on the top and they've been replaced and some other areas lower down in the stone. So we had health and safety issues with eroding stone and they've, they've been replaced all down this side. So they're complete. And then we've done some repairs to one of the pinnacles up on the southwest tower. And we've also had time to invite the peregrine falcons in. So we've got a nest box which we've just relocated this year. And we had our first nest in peregrines, which was really nice. Um, we're constantly going around and doing daily maintenance and planning what's coming next. So we were, you can, you can see the windows in the lower south transept. They've re, a couple of those have been replaced. They're plain glazing and our plumber glazer rebuilt those in the last two years. So we have a list of windows and priorities. So we replace the plain glazing, um, we do the roof repairs and we replace the pinnacles and any other bits of stone that need doing. Despite the recent completion of these major projects, there is still so much more to be done. Well, we've got a 10 year list. As you can see, the south transept roof, the lead is oxidized, um, and the retro choir roof, which is our worst roof, uh, leaks really badly. Estimated 200 to 250 roof leaks. But we've also got two great windows. So we've got the great east and the great west. There's a lot of stone and a lot of weight at height. We need to keep an eye on what's up there and make sure none of it wants to come down to ground. Those three projects are needed soon, along with new boilers, new toilets, new lighting. So it is a constant battle. The reality is it's very fragile. It is only a parish church. So it basically has the same resources as any other church housed in a much more modest building. There is a historic trust which the income from which has paid for some of the day-to-day -day maintenance. But whenever there's major capital work to be done, we have to go out fundraising in a big way. In terms of St Mary's, there's a huge amount of work to be done. We've done about £2.4 million pounds worth of work, which is massive, you know, it's a huge amount. Uh, but there's another 8 million required. Uh, we are reminded regularly that our tower collapsed, and people were killed, um, unfortunately, and it was, you know, a devastating moment in the history of the town. And our tower is in serious need of repair, as are our north and, and south transepts. And being such a vast building means that the work that we need to do is vast as well. So we've tried to be really good stewards of, of everything that we've managed to secure in terms of grants and funding um, and make every penny really be valuable, not for the sake of just repairing an ancient building, but because this building is used and is important and provides something special uh, for people. Um, and that's really important to us. St Mary's was shortlisted for a prestigious Heritage Award in 2022, recognises the quality and significance of the two churches. Uh, Kevin MacLeod, I present a programme called Grand Designs on television. Beverly, I know we cannot underestimate the value of beautiful, historic, 
well-crafted buildings. And it's incredibly important to remember the value they make to the quality of place. The well-made, beautiful building will speak to us and continue to do so. And that human energy that goes into buildings, that's something which actually in the well-made historic building is there in abundance. To St Mary's Church in Beverley in East Yorkshire to see the masonry repairs and the incredible... I'm Matthew Slocum and I'm director of the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. I thoroughly enjoyed my own visit to Beverley earlier this year. It's such a wonderful place, a really fantastic historic town and of course the two churches are at the heart of everything. You know, they, they dominate the town, but they're, they're also wonderful for visitors and uh, for everyone who lives there. For the SBAB, it's very often about the layering of history that makes a place special. And Beverly's got all of that, you know. It's interest from many periods, the ancient pattern of the streets, the positioning of the churches, but just the whole atmosphere and ambiance of the place was wonderful. Keep up the good work, you know, you've done a fantastic job. The two churches and the historic market town make Beverley a compelling destination for tens of thousands of tourists from across the UK and around the world every year. If you look at Beverley, we've done our best to maintain that um, important historical value that we have here. It's, it's a delightful market town. We've kept cobblestones, the architecture is, you know, very much as, it, as it's been for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. I'm Jane Everson, I'm a councillor at East Riding of Yorkshire Council, and I have a portfolio for economic development and tourism. I can't sort of stress enough how important these two churches are to Beverley, so bringing them together as, as a promotion, if you like, to just to highlight the, the the great importance, the attraction, and the number of people they bring into the town of Beverley every year, over 60,000, who come specifically to, to look at these two churches. It's so important that we're able to draw in the money that's needed and necessary to maintain their stature and, and to keep them actually as they are for many years to come. The Beverley and East Riding community is determined to ensure the survival of these remarkable ancient buildings. Local authorities, businesses, residents and parishioners are working together in partnership to raise £20 million. This vast sum of money is the current estimated cost of maintenance, repair and refurbishment of the two churches over the next 10 years. The danger that we face if we don't do something is that we would have to, for safety reasons, close the buildings. And I think that's why organisations such as the East Riding Council, Beverley Town Council, businesses, people in this area have come to support the project. So I'm Tim Carlyle. I'm the chairman of Two Churches, One Town here in Beverley. Beverley Minster is the largest parish church in the whole of the UK. And it's still a parish church, but it's larger than some cathedrals. And I think it's recognised that St Mary's is one of the most beautiful churches in this country. These two churches realised that they'd each got about £10 million worth of restoration costs to address. So there was a sensible coming together from both churches that they needed to approach the fundraising in the marketplace together. And the obvious extra party was the town. So two churches, one town, became a charity in 2019 and have, its main function is to fundraise for the uh, renovation of these buildings but critically to focus on three key areas, the heritage, the music that's generated from both churches and the learning. So you've got two Gothic churches that are famous in Europe and considered to be the best of that build. A place like this gives the impression of being very wealthy. You know, it's a magnificent building. Uh, the resources that were consumed in building it must have been fantastic. But actually, it's the responsibility of the local worshipping community. Uh, so the day-to-day -day operational costs of the Minster 
um, are a challenge. Um, we have made some roles redundant, which increases pressure on staff who remain. Uh, but we are not a well-resourced organisation. And the situation is very precarious. For many of the congregation, their building is a place of utter beauty and they, they, they love it and they cherish it. But the reality is it's also a huge responsibility because of course we don't get funding from the government or anyone else. So all that keeps this building going is the volunteers and the people who are connected with this building. And we wanted to not oppose one another, but to work together for the good of the whole town and the whole community. So the Two Churches, One Town allows us to do that. It allows us to pool our resources and, and our skills and our wisdom that's been acquired over the time to make sure that neither building is overlooked or lost. The campaign to save these magnificent ancient buildings from falling into disrepair is underway. The consequences of failure could be catastrophic, putting these churches very survival in serious doubt. The impact of their demise would not only impact congregants, but also be a huge blow to the local community at large and thousands of visitors they attract. It would be a devastating loss of outstanding British heritage. So this is a community that, that has a positivity about it. Um, it's engaged with the wider world. Um, uh, but sometimes it can feel as though uh, the building is taken for granted. Um, and actually it has a significance that is far wider than Beverly. Um, and we'd be delighted if folk from, from further afield um, felt able to, to support us. People coming in and seeing and touching stonework that is five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred years old is pretty extraordinary. It connects you with a history of humanity that is, is worldwide. If we allow things to deteriorate, we're not going to let people in hundreds of years enjoy what we do and learn about us the way we learn about the Victorians and the people before them that put the building together. Uh, these buildings uh, can be a source of great healing and I'm sure a lot of people uh, get the sense of peace there is because these buildings have been here for so long and so many people have come throughout the different generations and continue to come. These buildings are for everyone, you know, uh, they, they benefit the town but they're for visitors and people like me who came to Beverly earlier this year just thoroughly enjoyed seeing the buildings and this all takes people putting their hand in their pocket when necessary and just helping out a little bit. All of which goes towards ensuring that uh, these magnificent buildings last forever. And that human energy that goes into buildings, that's something which actually in the well-made historic building is there in abundance. It, 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 they, these are powerhouses of, of resource. They are, they are great energy batteries, reservoirs of, of, of human integrity and commitment. But it is an important building in this town. It's part of the heritage of this town, as is St Mary's. There's a story to be told between the two of them, which we're trying to do. So everything we can do to encourage people in here so that they can enjoy it and future generations can enjoy it because it is here to be admired. It's so important that we're able to draw in the money that's needed and necessary to maintain their stature and, and to keep them actually as they are for many visitors to come and for many years to come. Town would not exist unless they were there. And if we lost these great buildings, it would be greatly impoverished. But the churches are, in some ways, the purpose of us being here, I think. We would very much like people to come and to 
support it to help us keep this two great buildings going and mended and warm and watertight for hundreds of years. What nobody has wanted is the kind of nightmare scenario of having to close these buildings because they're unsafe. We want them to be safe, we want them to be free for people to come in and to view them. And I think it's a mark of people looking at us and thinking they want to be part of this exciting project. Two churches, one town. Saving Beverly's priceless heritage and keeping its historic buildings open and free to visit for everyone. Two churches, one town. Absolutely beautiful.